KPL News Time is 817. This is Acadiana's Morning News. Brandon Como, Bernadette Lee, and we continue our series of five questions with the major candidates for the uh, Louisiana Supreme Court, U.S. Senate, 3rd and 4th Congressional Districts. And we now visit with one of the uh, uh, candidates for the Louisiana Supreme Court seat that is up for grabs right now. Talking now with Judge Jimmy Genovese. And, sir, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. All right, let's go ahead and get to uh, the first question. What differentiates you from your challenger? Well, the distinction is that um, I am an appellate court judge, and uh, this is an appellate court race. The Supreme Court is the highest court of the land, and it's important that you put someone in that position that has appellate court experience. I I do not believe that it's a place for on-the-job training when someone's life, liberty, and property is at stake. Now, having served at, at, at three different levels uh, as a, a judge ad hoc on the Opelousa City Court um, and, and then at, as a district judge for 10 years and also on the appellate court for over 11 years, um, what the Supreme Court does is what I do. And they write opinions. I write opinions. They handle writs. I handle writs. And matter of fact, I've written over 500 legal opinions and been on 1,500 panels. So I'm ready to hit the ground running and get moving uh, in this matter. Uh, somebody is going to have to, if you never had appellate court experience, you're going to have to learn how to do your job. And it's not that easy a job, believe me. All right, question number two. There's a lot of discussion involving the oil industry and the lawsuits that have been filed against it here in Louisiana. What do you think about them, about them right now? Well, I've handled a number of those suits. I handled some of those suits on the district level when I was a district judge. And then being in the Third Circuit Court of Appeal, um, we've handled a number of those cases uh, as as well. Uh, a lot of them are referred to as, as legacy uh, suits. What you're seeing now is the legislature is finally getting a handle on it. Um, a lot of people expect the judges to do too much um, uh, in, in legal matters, and, and I really frown upon and I oppose uh, any type of judicial activism. So people will ask you, well, you're a judge, do something about it. Well, that's not our function. Our function is to apply the law that's given to us by the legislature. We don't have the liberty to go out and, and make the law. A good judge does not make the law. When there's ambiguity, we interpret the law, and, and that's what our job is. So these legacy suits have really plagued South Louisiana, and it has been a problem. Um, and, but the legislature has recently passed legislation to, to make sure that uh, to curtail the activity that's not really there. And, 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 and part of it deals with um, buying a piece of property just because it has contam- cam- contamination on it and then filing a lawsuit against the company that was uh, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Uh, that presents a problem. So the legislature has, has addressed that, and unless and until you have an assignment of the interest in the property that, that you're buying, unless you have an assignment of that interest, well, then you do not have a right to go back uh, in time against people that have been on or, or companies that have been on the land for 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. So the legislature is addressing that problem, and uh, we on the court, we interpret that legislation to make sure that the rights of all parties are protected. All right. Question uh, number three, Mr. Genovez, has to do with, you know, if elected, what does that first month look like for you? Well, before I answer that question, Bernie, I mean, I've always wanted to talk to you about about two things. One, okay. you, you have you have the greatest laugh. And, and when I turn <laughs> and I hear you laugh, you make me smile. And, and I thank you for that. Well, I appreciate now, that. Now, that's the good part. The, 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 the bad side is the fact that about 11 o'clock, you always start talking about the Petroleum Club and how and, and what's going on. And when I'm not even hungry at all, if I happen to hear that, then all of a sudden I become ravenous. So me that's too. a problem for me. But I anyway, apologize for that part. <laughs> but get, getting back to your question about um, uh, initial when elected, what to do. Um, having stated previously, being an appellate court judge, I don't have to learn the job. I know the job. I've been doing the job for 11 and a half years. What they do on the Supreme Court is what I do. So when I first get there, what, what you do, you set up your calendar. For example, I already have two of my three law clerks. They are seasoned. They have over 22 years of experience with me writing. So that makes quite a difference. So that's why when I say you hit the ground running, what they do is what I do. So I I set up my schedule, and and the schedule of appellate review is in the Supreme Court is very similar to the schedule that you would have in the appellate court because you you, you go by, you have conference days, you have oral argument, you have days that 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 I have been doing for well over 11 years. Mm-hmm. So uh, the actual setup is going to be very very limited. 
limited, I, I will not have very much to do other than get in my car and drive to New Orleans and, and sit down because I have my clerks in place um, uh, with a lot of experience. Also, um, my secretary has been with me. She was my former court reporter when I was a district judge. She's been with me for over 22 years, and this lady is um, solid. I mean, I have the greatest staff that you could have, and, and a judge is only as good as their staff. So having that in place already is a tremendous advantage, not to mention the fact if you've never done appellate review, what are you going to do? You're going to go there and just sit down and just have someone just have the law clerks write the opinions for you? You're not even going to know where to go, what to do. You've never written a legal opinion before. You don't know appellate review. That's a serious disadvantage, and that's why you don't go from the district court, skip the appellate court, and go straight to the Supreme Court. That's why for the last 56 years, every judge that served on the Louisiana Supreme Court has come from the Third Circuit Court of Appeal. Ever since the Third Circuit was in, uh, was created in 1960, for 56 years, all of the judges have come from the Third Circuit Court of Appeal because they are prepared, they are qualified, and they have that legal experience necessary to address appellate review. This is uh, more less about uh, not or not necessarily uh, about the job that we're asking from this standpoint, but you know, it's just there's been so much uh, concerning race relations in our country in our Acadiana community. Um, any thoughts uh, in in that direction and some of the turmoil we've seen, you know, where people just seem to be pitted against other people in our country? Bernie, a good judge is a judge who is a judge who treats everyone fairly and equally, gives them all a level playing field, does not cater to special, special interests, and follows the rule of law. So when you're dealing with race, a judge should never look at a case regarding race, regarding color, creed, age, sex, uh, sexual, uh, those matters have have nothing to do with with applying the law. We as judges have to, and this is what I've done for well over 21 years, is no matter who comes before me, I treat them all equally and fairly, give them a level playing field. I do not cater to special interest groups. I don't care whether it's lobby or plaintiff lawyers or big oil or foreign corporations. Or none of that is to take place. You are supposed to, Lady Justice is blind. She's that's, supposed to be, that, isn't she? <laughs> that, that blindfold across her, she's not to see race when she goes into court. She's not to see age, color, or creed in that particular matter. So a good judge is going to look at the facts that are presented, going to take the law that the legislature gives to him or her, and then apply that law to the facts, and it's completely irrelevant race. All right, and finally, our last question, uh, Judge Jimmy Genovez, uh, candidate for the uh, Louisiana Supreme Court. What would you say is your biggest flaw or misconception that people may have about you? How much time do we have? (laughs) (laughs) No, uh, seriously. I've thought about that, and and I think that my biggest flaw is that uh, perhaps I expect too much. Um, I, I I know that's a problem for me. It's hard for me to 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 uh, address that because that's the way I was raised. Mm-hmm. My father came from um, up north, Stanford, Connecticut. Came down here, uh, married a Dejean from between Lawtel and Church Point. So she hooked him, and the poor fellow never went back up north again. <laughs> and believe it or not, the reason I have these conservative values and the way I, is the way I'm raised. I mean, my father ran a tight ship, and my mother, I'm a mama's boy. So um, <laughs> uh, I, my mother and father distilled upon me the fact that you can always do better. I had to laugh because when I'd come home with a B on my report card, my father would say, well, why didn't you make a B plus? So I'd come home with a B plus. Why didn't you make an A? And I'd come home with an A sometime. And, and why didn't you make an A plus? And I'd say, gee, Daddy, when we get to the point that where, 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 we, where the cup is full, I mean, you can only put eight ounces in an eight-ounce jar. So my father, and thank God for the parents and the upbringing that I had, they pushed me the, to be the best that I could be. So when I have court, and, and, and perhaps it's a, it's a flaw of, of, of mine that I expect the attorneys to be prepared. I expect Expect them to be organized because they're representing the court and the court, the judicial system is sacred to me. I put 42 years of my life into the court and I want to make sure that that Supreme Court is the best court it can be. And I know that I'm the best candidate and can be I can I can make that court better. I'm convinced of that. So I, I, I sometimes when when you come to court, if you're not prepared and, and, and you're not organized, perhaps maybe I'm going to get on you a little bit about that. But <laughs> but we have a job to do and the courts have a lot of work to do and you got to be prepared and organized. You've come to appeal to me for something. Tell me what you've appealed for. I'm not interested in all that other stuff. So that's probably the, so the flaw. You dropped the hammer on him? 
Uh, well, not the hammer. I, no, you've got to treat people with courtesy and respect. And, and some judges forget who they are and where they are. Um, I'm a lawyer, mm -hmm. okay? And I've been a lawyer for 42 years. Um, and, and you have to remember that. And, and treating people courteously, courteously and with respect uh, is so important, not only to the court, but to the clients, court personnel, and everyone else. I consider the court... Um, uh, very sacred insofar as the last battle of civilized society is not going to be fought in a corporate boardroom. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be fought in uh, an operating room. It's going to be fought in a courtroom, similar to Bush v. Gore. So that's why the court is sacred. That's why you need the best people that you can possibly have, the most qualified and the most experienced people in the highest court of the land. I mean, Louisiana Supreme Court is the highest court of the land. It dictates the law of Louisiana for the next 10 years. Somebody's life, liberty, and property is at stake. Put the best person at the helm. Judge Jimmy Genovese has been our guest this morning, sir. We thank you so much for your time. Well, you didn't get a, give me an opportunity to <laughs> to address my my my, my French speaking people. Well, oh well, you could sure. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, I, my, my mother's a, <laughs> my, my mother's a Dijon. I mean, pour mes amis qui parlent français, votez pour moi s'il vous plaît pour le Cour suprême de la Louisiane le 8 de novembre. Merci bien, Dieu te bénisse. Perfect. Okay. That means vote for me uh -huh. on the 8th. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 8th of November. <laughs> fo fo follow me on Facebook and all. Thank you very much, Bernie. Thank you very much, Brandon. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Coming up now on 828.